The Token Explains, a beginner's guide to developing smart contracts using the Solidity programming language on top of the Ethereum blockchain platform. In this episode, we will be talking about variables and the types of variables are supposed and allowed to have in Solidity. Now, types and variables are the core foundation that smart contracts are built on top of. So this is a very important, basic but very important concept to, uh, to learn about. Now, Solidity is a strongly statically typed language. This means two things. Strong typing means that when we declare a variable, then it will only ever refer to values of one single type. So when we first say that some variable, say x, should be a number, then we can't later put a string or a boolean in there. Now, statically typed means that uh, the compiler during compilation when Solidity is transformed into Ethereum bytecode uh, that is the time where type checking occurs and these two things are important uh, and Solidity made the choices to be a strongly statically typed language uh, to be able to be relatively performant because the compiler is able to optimize the program uh, quite a bit because it's already able to know what types the different values are so it knows how much space it needs to allocate in the in the different blockchain components and it also allows the compiler to catch some bugs or allows you to catch some bugs because the compiler can recognize uh, when you try to use something of one type as something else which usually we don't actually want to do now this is not perfect because Solidity uh, is not uh, an ML style statically typed language but uh, it can help us a little bit in this regard which is really nice however it is something to keep in mind now at its base Solidity only supports a handful of different types the most basic one is the boolean type which is only one bit it can either be true or it can be false and booleans are really used to keep track of flags like if someone already did some action before uh, and of course when we compare different values we get a boolean back as a result which we can use to see if something happened or not now besides booleans solidity also uh, has uh, support for full numbers integer numbers um, both signed and unsigned ones which means that you can use both positive numbers and signed numbers are positive and negative numbers now usually when we only write int or uint which is short for unsigned integer then we are working with base 256 numbers uh, uh, that means that we can uh, the numbers can be very big and this is an implementation detail it allows the because the compiler the the byte, ethereum bytecode likes working with 256 bit uh, numbers because it already uses 256 bit numbers for a lot of its internal workings uh, because it uses a lot of cryptographic hashing functions um, it also means that we are usually uh, have enough space to perform arithmetic in because the numbers usually won't go beyond 256 bit but you can also use smaller numbers if you're uh, sure that your numbers will not go beyond the limit of 8 bit or 16 bit 32 64 128 bit which can uh, improve the speed of your code a little bit and more importantly reduce the gas cost of your code a little bit but of course this should only be done after you've already written your contract and you're relatively sure it works it's important two things that Solidity does not do for you first it does not allow working with floating point numbers no decimals which means that you need to keep track of the precision of your numbers outside of the blockchain so if you're working with say uh, a monetary amount then you need to think first what where to put the decimal and uh, convert the numbers outside of the smart contract uh, by multiplying them so they are large enough and afterwards when you get the value out dividing them by 10 to the same power to make sure the decimals back in place what Ethereum also will not do for you 
is perform overflow or underflow checking. And this means that if you end up with a result that is too big for uh, to store in one of these numeric types, then it will just roll over uh, and start counting at the other end. And this might seriously break smart contracts. There are some uh, libraries that allow you to do that, that do these checks for you if you use them. And we will look at those in a later episode because this is something very important that we need to keep in mind of in Solidity that many other programming language uh, do perform for you. Now Solidity has support for a couple of other basic types. It supports address types, which you can see is an opaque type that stores the location of another smart contract or a person's wallet address. And you, on an address you can uh, perform all kinds of calls, like checking how much Ether this address has. And we will be talking about that in a later episode. Furthermore, Ethereum supports enumerables, um, which are uh, variables or a type that uh, keeps track of one option of out of multiple options. So here you see an example where I've specified that we want to keep track of which drink someone likes uh, and this can be one of these four listed choices here. And then Ethereum also has support for both fixed size arrays of at most 32 bytes long and dynamically sized uh, arrays which might be even bigger and can be resized but have some other restrictions. When we will be talking more about arrays in a later episode. They are really important when you try to keep track of, uh, of new data that might be added over time to your smart contracts. And then finally there are a couple of reference types. These are types that internally uh, store other types. We have structs which you can see as a group of other types and each of these things in a struct, like uh, each of its properties, has its own name. And uh, you could, for instance, store a representation of a user and in there store a first name and a last name and an email address or an Ethereum address, uh, things like that, and combine them. And we will talk about structs in more detail in a later episode as well. And finally, we have mappings. And mappings allow you to look up a value when you already have a different value. and this allows us to keep track of uh, arbitrary data uh, by storing only uh, a reference value like uh, an identifier to it. Mappings do have some drawbacks as well. They are sort of like associative arrays that you might know from other languages, but not completely. Um, we will be talking more about that in a later episode as well. When you have a type, you can convert this type to a different type and when you make a numeric variable bigger, then this is not a problem at all. And it will just happen for you automatically, which is really nice because no data is lost. That means the compiler can just do that without being scared that something might go wrong. However, if you do want to compare between types, uh, which sometimes we do want, uh, even though some information might get lost, you can do so by wrapping the original value uh, with parentheses and putting the name of the new type in front of it, like shown here in this example. It's important as a final remark for this episode that when we uh, declare a type and we try to refer to it, then it will already have a default value. And this default value is some kind of empty value, which for numbers is zero, and for strings or byte arrays it is the empty string. And uh, this, uh, for booleans, it's false. Um, and it's important that you understand that for solidity there's no difference between something that does not exist yet and something that is zero. And sometimes this might be a problem. We will be talking more about this when we talk about structs and mappings. And then you will see some examples of when exactly this is a problem and also how we can, uh, can keep this in mind, can mitigate that problem. That was it for this episode. Leave us a comment, a like, subscribe and ring the notification bell to know whenever new episodes appear. The Tokener Explains is a collaboration between the Tokener and Resilia. 
If you're interested in the latest cryptocurrency related information and news, go to thetokener.com. And if you're building your own blockchain related product and have some questions or would like some help, reach out to us at resilia.nl.